Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to a live webinar here on Facebook Live, where we're going to talk about five guerrilla marketing tips for every small business owner. So during uh, this webinar today, we're going to cover some uh, good examples of uh, successful guerrilla marketing campaigns, as well as talk about some tips for how you can implement your own guerrilla marketing campaign for your small business. So let's jump right in and talk about what is guerrilla marketing. Uh, the definition from Oxford Dictionary is innovative, unconventional, and low-cost marketing techniques aimed at obtaining maximum exposure. Uh, so that's just one definition here. And we have a second definition from Cambridge Dictionary, which is any form of marketing that is original, unusual, and not expensive. That makes it a little more clear, uh, which is also what makes guerrilla marketing a great fit for small business. So let's talk about three reasons why guerrilla marketing is a great fit for small business. The first thing is that it's not expensive. Unlike a lot of traditional small business or for that matter larger business marketing campaigns, they're really expensive to execute. You either have to enlist the expertise of a marketing agency or you have someone on staff who can handle it and then of course you get into the budget of television and radio advertising and even online advertising like Google Ads or Facebook ads can all get really expensive. So one of the core important factors about guerrilla marketing is that it's not expensive. There's relatively li uh, little, if any, monetary investment. Uh, second is that it encourages creativity. Because of the fact alone that it's financially restricted, guerrilla marketing is an opportunity to really get creative with your marketing strategy for business. And if you do that properly, it generates buzz for your business. So the more creative you can get, the more people see your ad, the more people that talk about it. So therefore, the more exposure that you're going to get from that guerrilla marketing campaign. So let's look at a couple of examples of successful guerrilla marketing. So um, I've chosen three examples that we're going to talk about here. Uh, and each one of them enlists a slightly different element, but all of them have the core value that uh, one, they're not very expensive. Two, for the time that they were carried out, they were innovative. There weren't very many entities doing so. And three, that it had a positive result with their customers. So uh, the first example that we're going to talk about here is the Grateful Dead. What made what the Grateful Dead uh, did so unique is that they were the first band to directly compile lists of their fans so that they could reach out to those fans directly and sell tickets to them. Now, at the time, this was really unique for a musician to directly manage uh, those lists of their customers. Normally, there was promotions companies who would partner with local radio or television stations that would, that from there, get the local community involved, which would be your fans who would respond and then purchase tickets. It was a really inconvenient strategy because uh, there were a lot of levels that you had to get through to be able to reach your audience. So the Grateful Dead figured that by directly maintaining their mail list, they were able to contact fans in town directly when they were coming and sell those tickets directly to the fans. What that resulted in is that allowed the Grateful Dead the ability to put their biggest fans in the best seats. So uh, the best seats in a concert venue went to their biggest fans. And uh, we'll talk briefly about a couple of other guerrilla marketing techniques that the Grateful Dead used here. Uh, one of them was that uh, they were at the time the only band, and I believe uh, in this current day there are no bands uh, at the major level that the Grateful Dead are that do it, but rather than fight uh, people who were trying to record concerts, the Grateful Dead embraced it. Uh, they made special areas in their concert available to fans who wanted to plug in their recording equipment, and uh, that resulted in a better quality recording of the show, but it was done in the spirit that it had to be traded to other fans. It couldn't be sold on the commercial market like a live album could be. And what the end result 
result of that was, was uh, someone who heard how good they were uh, playing live, which resulted in new fans coming back to those shows the next time the Grateful Dead rolled into town. Another example of successful guerrilla marketing is the ALS Ice Bucket Challenge. This social media campaign has generated over $200 million since it was started in about July of 2014. Now, it has resurfaced annually from there, uh, but what it did was it was a social media post in which uh, someone, of course, dumps a bucket of ice water on themselves and make uh, a short uh, speech about how it was supporting uh, ALS. Uh, for funding needed to research. Uh, so the Ice Bucket Challenge was really a successful guerrilla marketing campaign in the sense that social media traditionally does not cost a lot of money to do. Now, with that said, it's important to note that you never know if a video or any kind of social media content is going to go viral, and you cannot plan for content to do so. This is one of those examples of a campaign that was well executed and well carried out. Uh, now, that's not to say that they sat in a conference room and started out saying, we're going to plan this viral campaign that generates millions of dollars. No, they took uh, something that was raising awareness for a very serious cause and put a spin on it where someone is doing uh, something that's kind of a, a little outside of the norm. And by putting that on social media, it really generated shares and uh, brought the uh, awareness to ALS that they were uh, ultimately going for at the end of the day. Another example is Will It Blend? Uh, this is a classic YouTube uh, channel started by Blendtec in which they were just trying to demonstrate how durable Blendtec blenders were. Now, this was a series where they put all kinds of crazy, unorthodox things into a Blendtec blender and uh, turn the blender on and inevitably the blender would turn whatever it was they stuck in there into powder. Um, what made this interesting was that it demonstrated the extreme durability of their product. It also did so in a way that was entertaining. It wasn't throwing the regular everyday ingredients into the blender that many of us do at home. It was something that was just so far over the top that ultimately it generated buzz around Blendtec blenders, which led to an increase in sales. Now, their very first video went online in 2006, and they're still posting new videos to this day and have even launched a website uh, around Blendtec blenders in this uh, branding of willitblend.com. So let's talk about some guerrilla marketing tips for your business. The first thing that we need to know is who is your audience? So your guerrilla marketing campaign has to be a unique fit for the audience that you're trying to reach. So the better you understand who your best customer, who your audience is, the more customized you can make that campaign to resonate, resonate with your audience. Second. Create outside of the box. So be creative with your marketing campaigns. This comes back to one of the three main uh, things that makes guerrilla marketing unique. Because it's inexpensive, you have to really get creative with how you're going to execute your campaign. Make sure that you're giving this campaign some personality and that it's in an unexpected way, natural day-to-day -day environmental things that your audience will naturally interact with. Think of an unexpected way to put your business, your brand into their everyday lives. That leads us to number three, get your logo everywhere. Whether it's stickers, branded clothing, uh, for example, uh, we're uh, uh, 
cla a classic example of good branding would be embroidered work shirts. So whether you use polos or button down shirts, it's a good idea to get your logo uh, added to those as well as other creative things like card magnets are a great inexpensive way to help a growing audience uh, learn about your company and your brand. Number four, do more with social media. So if you have attended any other webinar or workshop that uh, Open in Indiana has conducted over the years, you'll always hear us talk about why it is so important for your small business to be using social media. The reason is that it's free to join and it's really inexpensive to make some pretty creative campaigns that can help do a lot for your brand as far as your visibility as well as in the long term generating your sales. Um, great examples of things to do with social media are for directly interacting back and forth with your audience. This allows you to get some real-time feedback on how effective any of your campaigns are. This also allows uh, for easy ability to share customer success stories. So you want to make sure that in addition to getting your social media network set up that you're sharing with your audience uh, what your social media networks are and that you're posting content there that engages them. And when you have a customer make a purchase, make sure you ask them to share how your product or service has changed their life. So uh, if it's a service-based organization, a short testimonial for how, your how that company made a difference in the customer's life, or if it's a product, you see them all the time, great product review videos with someone talking about what that product did to improve their daily life. Uh, next, let's talk about number five, which is don't be afraid of emotions. Emotional advertising in the long term is going to be successful, and I'll give you an example. In the 1980s, when Coca-Cola introduced New Coke, they didn't have the response that they hoped their audience was going to have. In fact, they actually hired a psychiatrist to listen in on customer complaint calls to understand what exactly went wrong with this campaign. And that psychiatrist came back with, these customers feel like a member of their family has died. They created an emotional bond with their customers over the 50 plus years that they were in business up to that point. So you want to make sure that any opportunity you can help establish an emotional connection with your brand, do it. And it doesn't have to be as deep as a well thought out family love. It could start out as simple as something funny. If you're ever watching an ad on TV or you scroll past something in your uh, news feed on uh, your uh preferred social media network, you'll see things that make you laugh. And when it makes you laugh, it embeds a uh, an emotional marker in your brain that you'll remember them uh, at a later date. Uh, if you know Christian Tombers with Charlie Tango Productions, he talks about this a lot, where you want to make sure that you've invoked some kind of emotional bond uh, in, un in understanding who you are as a professional and what your business does. Uh, that's always why funny ads go a lot further than just, uh, here's our product, here's how to contact us ad. You want to make sure that you step outside of that here's your product. Make sure you're telling the story. Tell that story in a way that your audience can envision themselves. So now what we'll do during this portion of the webinar is take your questions from the comments. If you're watching live with us, uh, the first half of our webinars is a presentation followed by the second half being questions from our viewers. So if you're watching live with us, make sure to comment your question below and we'll make sure to answer that during this broadcast today.
questions uh, is what is the line between being funny and clever versus offending the viewer? Well, uh, Christian, the first thing is uh, you have to make sure that you know who your audience is and where they draw the line. Uh, so if your audience is likely to not care for things like profanity or uh, you know, political stuff, you want to make sure to avoid it. Now, if your audience embraces those kinds of ideas, I'll give you a great example, Cards Against Humanity. Uh, Cards Against Humanity embraces the vulgar, the obscene, uh, because it works for their audience. Uh, so the short answer is if your ideal customer would be offended by it, it's not a good idea to go with it. If your ideal customer would find it amusing and a great hook and a way to engage them, then absolutely. If you are watching live with us here, this portion of the webinar is answering your questions. So if you're watching live with us here on Facebook, we encourage you to drop your uh, questions in the comments uh, and we'll make sure to answer them during our webinar here today. Um, we will also have the entire webinar, including this Q&A session, uh, available on our website later on at openinindiana.com slash watch. Uh, so we will continue to answer your questions. We encourage you to leave them here in the comments. Uh, Carol Blackman uh, here in the Indianapolis and Fishers area's uh, question is, how to overcome I already have a realtor statement? Well, Carol, that's a very careful question uh, that we need to make sure that we address first, and that's if you're, if that person is already in a contract with a realtor, then there's really not anything we can do about that because there are ethics of how those contracts are put together and good faith of competition with other realtors. Now, if they don't uh, currently have a deal or a contract with an existing realtor, just make sure to point out the subtle things that make you personally unique as a realtor. So uh, I know your tagline is, it's all about you. And make sure that you understand, uh, that your customer understands that, that your entire approach is, well, before we look at homes, what do you want? What schools do you want to be in if that's an option for you? Do you need something that's easy access to the interstate? Just uh, things that let them know that you're going to go the extra mile to make sure that they are choosing the right person and working with you. Other great things, Carol, to uh, look at here, especially since uh, the buyer cycle or the sales cycle for realtors can be so long, is make sure that even if they're not in a position to buy or sell their home yet, if uh, they will be in the long term, make sure you maintain some visibility with them. So, of course, the most important uh, way to look at that is make sure you're taking advantage of your social media presence and a very robust and active email marketing list. So, um, a great example. If you have like the perfect listing up uh, up available right now, make sure that even the people who aren't looking for a home right now that gave you the A-OK -okay to email them know about it. Because chances are they know someone who is having that conversation of, I just can't find the perfect place. So make sure that even the people that aren't directly your client yet always have like that hot lead of, you know, that perfect house in the right neighborhood priced competitively so it won't last long. If you are watching live with us here on Facebook Live, uh, this portion of our webinar is answering your questions about small business marketing and guerrilla marketing tactics. So uh, type down in the comments what your question is and we'll make sure that we answer them during this webinar. Uh, we will also archive this webinar in its entirety, uh, including the questions, excuse me, at openinindiana.com slash watch.
If you are watching live this afternoon, this portion of the webinar is answering your viewer questions. Uh, in the comments below, uh, type in your marketing and guerrilla marketing questions and we'll make sure to answer them during this broadcast. We have a question from Carol Blackman uh, with uh, Indy's Best Realty, which is, how is the best way to ask for referrals? Well, uh, Carol, there's a couple of ways to do that. Uh, if it's uh, in a networking environment, uh, sketch out the picture of what the ideal client or prospect looks like to you. So uh, kind of give like that imaginary image of the perfect, uh, the perfect client. So it could be a couple with a new child looking for their first home to purchase, or it could be someone around retirement age who is looking to downsize. Make sure that you sketch out who that referral uh, looks like that you're trying to reach. Uh, but at the same time, it is okay to just straight up ask people, who do you know who's ready to buy or sell their home? Um, if you know Christian Tombers, he uses a format of I wish you would have told me uh, postcards as a way to make sure that you're letting people that are either friends or you know extended family or people who may not quite know what you do for a living to help keep them in the loop. Um, at the same time, make sure that you're emailing them on a regular basis. That comes back to when you have a new listing uh, that you're trying to move quickly is email that entire list and let them know, hey, this is the house that's available. This is where it is. This is how it's priced. Uh, who do you know who's looking to buy in this area? So just make sure you're as specific as you can be about uh, who you're looking to meet. If you're watching live with us today here on Facebook, we are answering your questions during this portion of the webinar. Uh, so if you're watching with us, drop your questions in the comments below and we will make sure to answer them during this webinar. We will also have this webinar available after, uh, after the broadcast today at openinindiana.com slash watch. Uh, Christian, uh, your question was where to where can one find examples uh, and resources of guerrilla marketing? So uh, for the purpose of being able to assemble this webinar, um, I did a fair amount of research uh, just simply by starting with a Google search of guerrilla marketing examples. And you'll find no shortage of websites that ranked uh, excellent examples of guerrilla marketing. One of them all, uh, always comes back to the fact that it has to be in the unexpected. It has to be in a place that no one would expect to find marketing. I'll give you a great example. While doing research, um, I came across an example on multiple websites of uh, Jeep, uh, or well, Chrysler, the parent company of Jeep, that spray painted uh, parking lines in 
uh, humorous places, untraditional parking spots, and it said parking for Jeeps only. Uh, so it was to play on that idea that they're kind of a, a drive on any terrain type of vehicle. And of course, you can't see that looking from a traditional car because you're probably otherwise walking in the path. Um, so they can be all over the place uh, as far as where you can find an example. Um, and make, make sure to keep in mind that guerrilla marketing is one of those things that if you see one company do it and it works for them, uh, one size certainly does not fit all here. And at the same time, you're really not going to have the same success with the same exact campaign more than once. So you have to make sure that you're staying on your toes and being as creative and as possible possible for each unique campaign. If you are watching with us this afternoon, uh, we are in the second half of the Five Gorilla Marketing Tips for Every Small Business Owner webinar. Uh, this is the portion of our broadcast where we're answering viewer questions. So if you're watching live with us, drop your questions below and we will make sure to answer them during this uh, broadcast today. After this broadcast, we will archive this entire webinar, complete with the questions and answers on our website at Open and Indiana.com slash watch. If you are watching live with us, this is the questions portion of our webinar in which we're asking viewers to comment their questions uh, for us to answer about anything small business marketing, including guerrilla marketing, which was our webinar topic here today. Uh, it is 4.30 p.m. Uh, and this is the last call for questions. We're going to put out the five-minute warning. Uh, if by 4.35 we have not received any further comments, uh, we'll be ending our webinar today. Uh, make sure if you are an, an Open in Indiana follower that you join us Thursday afternoon at 4 o'clock p.m. Uh, for a special webinar on Zoom. Uh, so it will not be broadcast on Facebook Live. It will be held via Zoom in which we're going to talk about the details of getting your profile and business directory listing set up on Open in Indiana. Uh, if you have not received our weekly events email, uh, Monday morning, uh, please send an email to info at openandindiana.com and we'll be happy to send you the Zoom link and password to be able to join that meeting. Uh, it is 4.31 p.m. This is a live webinar, Five Guerrilla Marketing Tips for Every Small Business Owner. Uh, this portion of the webinar, we are asking you uh, to ask us your questions about small business marketing, including topics related to guerrilla marketing, which we covered in this webinar today. Um, we encourage you to drop any questions you have, and we will answer them as long as we are streaming live. And after today's webinar, we will have this video available on our website at openinindiana.com slash watch.
last call for viewer questions. If you are watching live with us, this is the last call for viewer questions. If you're watching with us and you have a question, we encourage you to put it in the comments below now and we will make sure to answer it before we end this broadcast. It is now 4.32 p.m. Uh, our last call is in effect until 4.35 p.m. If we have not received any further questions, uh, we will be ending today's webinar broadcast. It is 4.34 p.m. Uh, we are making a last call for any viewer questions. If you are watching live with us today and have any questions about your small business marketing, including guerrilla marketing topics, which we covered in today's webinar, we encourage you to comment those here in the video. Make sure to join us uh, Thursday at 4 o'clock p.m. for a special Zoom webinar in which we'll show you how to update your profile and business directory listings on Open in Indiana. If you do not yet have that Zoom meeting link, send an email to info at openinindiana.com. My name is Ryan Henry, Idea Guy for Open in Indiana, telling you to have a great afternoon and don't forget to join us Thursday starting at 4 o'clock p.m. on Zoom.